When a person's working on energized conductors, adequate cover-up is extremely important for two reasons. To eliminate contacting something of a different potential, and to reduce the magnitude of electrical arc. A common phrase in our industry is second point of contact. This can be defined as the point when current leaves an unprotected part of the body when contact is made with energized conductors or equipment. Electrical injuries are only possible when two points of contact exist. To prevent this from happening, there's two things you can do. The first is to insulate everything within hand's reach. This would include rubber gloves, sleeves if needed, and cover-up. And the second is to isolate everything below your feet. This would include insulated buckets and platforms. Before starting any work around energized lines, identify what your first points of contact will be. This will help to identify your second points of contact. So let's say your first point of contact is the face. Then a second point of contact could be an opposite phase, the neutral, hardware, or anything else of a different potential. If your first point is the cross arm or other hardware on the pole, then it could be an energized phase or anything else of a different potential. In this graphic, the worker is wearing a rubber glove with a hole in it as he's working on the exposed phase. Although the bucket he's standing in has isolated him, he isn't insulated because the integrity of his rubber glove has been compromised. If he contacts the cross arm while working on the phase, there will be a path for current to flow through his body to ground, which will result in a serious injury or death. So in this situation, the phase is the first point of contact because this is where the focus of the work was located. And the cross arm is the second point of contact, which was a different potential than the hardware. This situation could have been avoided had he adequately covered the second point of contact, which was the cross arm, and properly tested his rubber gloves. Although you want to avoid contacting the cover-up, these precautions would have saved him from getting hurt. All right, so let's say the glove doesn't have a hole in it. The worker makes a phase to ground contact and although the worker is insulated, an arc flash occurs when the wrench contacts the exposed phase. If the other phases aren't covered up, the arc could grow to the next phase, triggering a phase-to-phase -phase arc flash. This is much more dangerous because the two phases combined have more energy than the phase-to-ground arc by itself. So what can be done to prevent this from happening? First, verify the integrity of your insulation and isolation. Second, cover all energized parts. Third, cover all the parts on the support structure in the work area. When applying cover-up, be aware of extended reach. In this situation, the worker has adequate cover-up because as he reaches out, he can't contact the exposed phase. But if he has a wrench in his hand, he's within reach and must apply additional cover-up. Fourth, cover or reposition guy wires, neutrals, or communication cables in the work area. And last, work on one phase at a time. You should always take the time to assess the surrounding area and apply an adequate amount of cover-up. It only takes a minute to protect yourself from a life-threatening situation.